I fractured my sacrum, my lower back bone, like 10 weeks out from the race. Um, and it just, and I put my heart and soul like so many, I mean, I mean the number of athletes that, that kind of got injured, ill or something happened. My wife was one of them. Um, yet the store, obviously the, the main thing about 2012 that comes out of it are, is super Saturday with Greg, Janice and Jess and Mo and, um, and Robbie and all these successful stories, which is rightly so. Um, and then there's also this other side of the coin of the carnage that it left. And I don't want to say emotional scarring because it's, it, it, it is in the short term while you're still trying to be an athlete, but that, that does change over time. But for me, it was, um, it was the best and worst days in my athletic career because I really believed and I really trained and I put everything in and I, that, it's not a regret because it shows how I viewed the sport but I really didn't get into the spirit of it for those two weeks I mean I was in the I was I was a dead I was kind of dead inside I was just numb going through the process um of it because I knew I knew I wasn't going to get anywhere near what I was capable of um and it was it was not it, it, it I, there were so many things I did that I look back on and I can just, and it's cool. I think, oh, it's cool that I did it, but I know I did it with no emotion. Mm. And that sounds so sad and that sounds horrible, uh, but that's the truth. Um, and I mean, I, 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 I traveled in with Mo and, I, you know, there's some of the fonder memories are, are just seeing the circus that surrounded him going in. You know, landing in landing in London Airport and just the fanfare of media that wanted to see him, and I I could just walk through and he couldn't move, and we're driving on the way to the um, the uh, the village, and people were literally hanging out the car trying to see him and take pictures of him, and yeah, Jess Ennis on the runway as we're landing, and her image on there, and there were so many things about it that I think especially with Jess and Mo, because they were pinned as meddling, how they cope with that, how they dealt with that, I think is incredible. There's one thing to meddle at the Olympics. I think it's another thing to do it mm. with expectation. And I have to say, I thought, well done to all of them, obviously, that did medal. But what I think it's another level to have kept calm, kept focused and, and do it. And um but yeah, it was an amazing time in so many ways. But for me, it was a bit, yeah, it was it was difficult. And there'll always be this what if for mm -hmm. me. Um, not of what if I could have beaten Mo and won, <laughs> but in terms of I do wonder how close could I have got? I think it's more the how close, you know. Could I, have, with a, a lap to go, could I have just been waving at the camera and sort of, I don't know. It's just so it's difficult. It's funny, actually. And uh, you'll have to edit this bit out, but the, that's on the wall up there. What is that? I see. Are you at pace? Are you at pace management office? I'm, pay, I'm just, pay to, uh, Yeah, I'm in pace office. So I've got <laughs> on the other side. You've got uh, the big picture, this room. and uh, that's um, you say. Have you been in here? I have been in there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think there's some golden. There's some golden shoes there somewhere, isn't there as well? Yeah. Is there? Yeah, 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 that's right. Over yeah. there. Oh, they need to update the decor. <laughs> well, yeah. It was like that eight years ago. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, some of us that are running aren't winning medals, so they can't. <laughs> <laughs> I see, I see. Okay. It's a problem. <laughs> oh, great, great. So take us, yeah, I understand the, the emotional investment of people in London 20. So obviously people talk about it, uh, spectators who experienced it from the outside as a, you know, peak UK, someone called it to me. Um, but I can mm. understand that for, for athletes involved, it's, it's huge emotional investment, um, different experience altogether. Mm. Um, tell me about the, so so going beyond there, t tell us about beyond there. Uh, were, were you based in Eugene at this time as well? Yeah, I was based in Eugene from 2009 to the end of 2013. Okay. So I had, I spent after 2012 all winter sorting out my back mm. and trying to rehab from that. And I ended up having a reasonable 2013 we're off no winter. I mean, I missed the world qualifying time by a second. 
um, well, no, eight hundredths of a second. Um, and that's when uh, it was a shame. That's when um, I think after 2012, this is the thing that, again, uh, yeah, it's going to sound a bit controversial, but I just like to state facts. But leading into 2012 and, and lottery funding coming in, like in when it was late 90s, there was this real dream period of support and enthusiasm to help athletes um and i know people will have their issues with the federate with with the uk and federation stuff but and 2012 was like a hotbed of of kind of expectations and stress and all that but as a result of 2012 things became very different um with the way things are done um and it and it's still not still there's still the hangover from it in my opinion um and uh in 2013 i ran i was eight tenths off the qualifying time and was told i'd be picked don't don't run another 10k save yourself and was told not to tell anyone that i was told that and um so i didn't and i wasn't picked and then after that point things just got a little bit kind of difficult because um in the far so far as you know it, it kind of it, it the other side of the coin sort of 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 the i think greg talked about it like the favoritism and stuff like that started creeping in and that just made it difficult but at the same time you started to see the birth of a lot more other channels to focus yourself as an athlete and it wasn't all just about championships and there was a lot more road races a lot more mm. time trialing and a lot more and the sport now is is much bigger when it comes to setting out your calendar for races and and, and after 2012 it, it was it was very kind of there was that transition away um, and 13 was a, was a was almost like a slap in the face of what happened in 2012 I'd worked really hard and done really well off and not much of a winter and just got a slap for my efforts and and I thought oh thanks very much um and so then when 2014 uh with had a massive change then moved back to the UK um and I started working with Alan Story to start training for marathons and thinking right I'm going to start moving up to the marathon and um, that's when I did my debut for the marathon in 2014 in London, um, which, which I ran 2.11.19 in, and it ha it's relevant to say this, in old shoes. Um, uh, I don't know what that would have been in new shoes. It would <laughs> you know, it'd be quite interesting, but it was almost like a wow, like the start of a new career now, start of a different path, a different focus, um and again another reason for the, you, the federation to uh show their dislike for me uh that year with some some other decisions that were made but anyway that's by the by but then um at the end of that year i picked up an achilles injury that resulted in operation so i actually ended 2014 having an achilles operation and was basically told by the doctor they said they it was told to me like uh, I'm sorry, Chris, but that's your career done. The surgeon looked at it and went, no one's tried to run a marathon after a surgery like this. So if you try, let me know how it goes. <laughs> right, okay. And uh, and I then, after after my surgery in the end of 14, I've been on a bit of a journey, to be honest, ever since of, I feel like I've, I'm a different person and athlete ever since then because I've never operated or done things the same way as I ever have done before, but because I can't, I have a left foot that doesn't function fully in the, in the way it used to. And so um, that kind of helped me kind of reset my mind to go, you know what, this is like a, my second career in some ways, and this is my road career and I'm doing it. I'm doing it with, with 85% of my powers, but that's fine because you know i you know i can still do something with it and so it's been it's become a it became a lot more fun after that point because i kind of took myself less seriously mm. after that mm. point and kind of knew that you know that that if i stressed about the fact that 
that I wasn't able to do everything I used to be able to do, then it would just, I, I should just leave if that's going to infuriate mm-hmm. me. But it was kind of a sort of a guillotine moment of, of switching a little bit. But then, uh, I guess that this is part of the back, the, the back story, which leads into the Olympic qualification for Tokyo, isn't it? At Kew Gardens. Mm-hmm. I mean, a really unique occasion, but you, you've had the injuries. You're not a funded athlete anymore. Um it was a weird old one, but it's, for some reason it, it really captured the imagination, wasn't it? That that, that uh, you qualifying for Tokyo at the Kew mm. Gardens trial. You know, it was uh, lockdown time. There was COVID going on. Mm. Um, Gemma was giving birth that week. You had yeah. your hand run over. It was just uh, yeah. <laughs> sounds like having. It sounds like a, you know a Hollywood script or something. It was a, <laughs> it was a crazy old week, a crazy old occasion that wasn't it? But uh, the, mm. the were you forty years of age at that time as well? At the time of Q, I was 39, and then 39, by, the, so, by know, the time of the Olympics, I was 40, yeah. So, you know, that was, uh, how, how would you describe that that whole experience? Because it was, uh, where do you rank it in terms of your achievements? I, I, I'd i rank it in terms of, so, 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 so sport and life tend to be separate. Mm-hmm. I kind of my career in sport or my life things in life you know getting married is one thing and going to olympics is is separate and and so when i think about my greatest sporting achievement my mind immediately goes to when i nailed it and i ran the fastest race i could or something like that Mm. and so but with q it was this the by far the best moment of my life because it was this blend of life and sport and the challenge and everything just colliding into this into this one moment because I was running as a dad as a new dad and anyone that becomes a parent for the first time five days after that happens you're still pinching yourself you're still pinching yourself even when they're probably 18 I don't know but it's he's not quite that age yet but it you're just in this weird mindset of wow like and but I've got to run a marathon like you say I've got a bust up hand I've trained hard for this like and I was in good shape but I've got to do it because I'm exhausted there was just it it honestly felt like the reason it was so amazing is because I honestly deep down if I'm honest didn't think it was possible I thought I felt like did I physically feel like I could do it? Yeah. Did I feel like I was in that kind of shape? Yeah. I mean, me and Alan thought I was in around two nine shape, maybe even two eight on a good day. So the fitness was there, but because of the way the week was panning out with everything, the way all these other things had been going on in my life, it just felt like it was just going to be a step too far emotionally for me to pull it off. Um, and so it, it ranks number one when it comes to life experiences um and it's and it's the fact that it's partly sport related with going to olympics and it's becoming a dad and it's to do with there's injuries and it's just got a bit of everything when it comes to that emotion whereas every other moment in my life it's it's you know winning the european medal that's all about the running getting married that's all about my wife and it's like those moments tend to be quite singular, but this was just a collision of, I didn't know what to do with myself when I finished the race. All I could think about, I want to go see my boy, but I'm going to the Olympics. And I, I it just, I didn't know what to do with myself. I remember taking myself off for a moment and just going, I, I, I don't, I don't know what just happened there. How, how just in complete disbelief. And I've never had that emotion before, you know, crossing the line when I won my silver medal, the Europeans it was like this there was a lot of relief in there there's a lot of happiness but I've never had that feeling of how I don't I, I, I don't know how I've done that I just just could, I just couldn't get my head around it and I was just I was just driving back on my uh to, to go home because obviously Gemma was at home she watched the race on the tv she didn't come in just just in a just if I could bottle that feeling and then going in and seeing Gemma and seeing my boy, just if I could bottle it, 